Hello students. Today we will see the anatomy of the tongue. Anatomy. The introduction tongue is a solid conical muscular organ. It is covered by mucous membrane and lies partly in oral cavity and partly in the pharynx that is the oro coming to applied anatomy of tongue so there are many congenital anomalies of tongue which can be included in uh, the applied anatomy here a glossia is absent tongue or hemiglossia is absence of half of the tongue sometimes the tongue may be bifid as in this figure so it is called a bifid tongue so such a bifid tongue may not always obstruct the function of the tongue then there is a lingual thyroid we have seen that there is a foramen cecum at the junction of anterior two third and posterior one third of the tongue which is the point where the sulcus terminalis begins so here is the foramen cecum and from here there is beginning of the thyroglossal duct so sometimes the thyroid gland may be found within the tongue and that is called the lingual thyroid also this duct may develop into a cyst and this is called the thyroglossal cyst sometimes the tongue is fixed to the floor of the mouth and that is called tongue tie or ankyloglossia now this tongue can be released by a small surgery if the tongue is fixed in this way the child may not be able to talk properly now an other uh, applied anatomy is glossitis also called as stomatitis or simply ulcers of the tongue which uh, are commonly uh, seen now acute glossitis may be Uh, due to inflammation of lymphatic nodules it will lead to swollen tongue and it will lead to pain while eating then anemias in anemias the tongue appears smooth and pale then in jaundice jaundice is visualized on the underside of the tongue then there are many conditions of the gi tract which can which are reflected on the tongue like some fungal infection bacterial infections so that is typical appearance of the tongue in such infections lingual tonsil forms a part of the waldeer's ring now waldeer's ring is a collection of lymphatic nodules around the uh, oropharyngeal isthmus where there is entry of air as well as food so it acts as a first line of defense of the body so these are lingual tonsils which also form a part of this waldeer's ring other components are the palatine tonsil the tubal tonsil and the nasopharyngeal tonsil now tongue its under surface is having a mucus covering and this is utilized for sublingual medication so typically for heart patients a tablet called sorbitrate can be placed beneath the tongue for immediate relief because it is rapidly absorbed through the mucosa of the tongue the genioglossus as we have seen is a safety muscle of the tongue and <coughs> so the tongue has to be pulled out especially during an anesthesia or in unconscious patients to prevent the uh, fall of the tongue backwards now injury if you want to test the injury to hypoglossal nerve or testing of this genioglossus it is done by asking the patient to uh, protrude his tongue and if the tip of the tongue deviates to one side then one genioglossus is paralyzed now this tip will deviate to the paralyzed side because the normal genioglossus will push the tip so protruded tongue deviates towards the side of the lesion due to unopposed action of genioglossus muscle whose action is 
to protrude the tongue so this is seen if the hypoglossal nerve is damaged now the carcinoma of tongue is very common cancer anterior two third is frequently affected now the causes as we know uh, tobacco chewing is the most important cause for cancer of the tongue the diagnosis can be done by a biopsy it can be confirmed by histopathology report now the spread as we have seen in lymphatics it can spread to the lymph nodes local as well as to the opposite side and for treatment there can be if it is a small lesion then half of the tongue can be removed so surgical treatment followed by some additional chemo or radiotherapy if indicated now this carcinoma is usually a squamous cell carcinoma because the tongue is lined by stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium